All right, internet bling, back with another one. Just got to start this with saying thanks for the love on my last video here. It's got quite a lot of views for me and my channel anyway, and uh, it's looking pretty popular. So thanks for that. Thanks for the love. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And in this video, I'm going to talk about UTM tracking, which in my mind has always been very necessary, but with the iOS 14 updates, it's even more necessary now. You should be using this in all your links. If you're not, you're mad. What's happening is a lot of purchases aren't being registered, the ones from iOS users, right? So you need to be able to get a handle on tracking them in another way so you can judge your campaign performance and therefore know whether to kill a campaign or leave it on. And that applies to ad sets as well, obviously, that are inside the campaigns. So I did find this YouTube this morning by Michael the Ninja so I will leave that linked in the video description I'm going to rob a bit of it as well and put that in my video hope he doesn't mind it's interesting because Shine On have actually I've not logged into platform for ages but uh, since the updates I've added this new analytics section here which has got UTM tracking built right in which is really handy and yet another example of how on top of things shine on R. They're always pushing forwards, adding new features and extra bits and bobs to help the users, which I think are, is a really positive thing. What it means is that if you're on platform, your UTM will be a bit different than it will be if you run a Shopify store. I run a store, so I'm gonna cover that first and then we're gonna come back to platform users. I've made this little text file here with this string in it. I will put this in the description of this video as well so it's easy for people to copy and paste. But this string here, without wanting to go into all the ins and outs of what does what and why, I'm just going to show you it in action. I think that's the easiest way. We go into Ads Manager. These are just all old ads in another business manager of mine. We're going to want to go into Ads and Edit an Ad and this string of text here this is better and almost easier, right, than if you are on platform, because if you run a Shopify store, you can use one universal string of code, which is this one here that I've highlighted, and just paste this into every single ad. You don't have to change it. You scroll down to the bottom of your ad here, and you just paste that in here like that. And that's about it, right? That's all you do. Just make sure that is in all your ads. I pretty much hardly ever make new ads. I would just copy older ones and change the demographics inside those ads, change the ad ID maybe. But because I've already put this in an original ad, every duplicate of that ad I make afterwards will always have this in. And I've been using this for a long, long time, not just since the iOS 14 updates. No matter what you do, no matter what tracking you add into your links or whatever, you'll always lose a couple where they come in as what's known as no referrer, where your URL code here, your tracking code will have been stripped out for one reason or another, usually an ad blocker. They tend to mess UTM up, but there are other things as well. You ought to have tracking on that link to be able to see where your purchase came from, but there's nothing in there. That'll always happen, and it used to drive me mad so I've been using this in my ads for years now particularly now we've had these iOS 14 updates I cannot stress the importance of using these enough if you don't use them you just you won't be able to get a handle on your ads or know where purchases are coming from therefore you won't know whether to keep ads on or turn them off so it is ultra important I think even more so now so if you're running a Shopify store to do your Shine On products from, please put this in all your ads. And what this does here, if we go over to my store, I'm going to show you a couple of examples. I've had to block out the products info and obviously the customer info. You come down here to conversion summary in your orders. And in this example, if we click view conversion details, we come in here pops this window up and you'll see we've got a session from Facebook via UTM. Click this link here and right here. This is the name of the campaign. This is the ad set and this is the ad, 
right? So you know now, you know where this purchase originated. This was from a add to cart lookalike, three to five percent. This is just how I know my campaigns, right? And my ad sets are based on 180 day time frame. And this lookalike was based on the product. And I started the campaign on the 30th of June. That's just how I name my stuff in Facebook. So you know where this purchase came from. Right now, if that purchase came from an iOS device, it might well not have registered in your Facebook ads manager. So you're sat there running a campaign, spending your money, thinking, oh, is this making me any money? Is my RAS in the right place, etc." And with this UTM tracking, you can check pretty much all of them. Not every single one will work, but the majority of them will, so you can get a better handle on your ads by using this. Another example here, just like before, it's another order. And this use is a bit different because the first link they came in on was actually from an email. I sent out an email here that also uses UTM as well, right? And this was just, that's the name of the email. That doesn't really matter from Clavio, but the source is important. Years ago now, I did really well off a necklace that I called Angel Tear. Okay, that was just the name that I assigned to the necklace. And I think I did about 150K off that or whatever. It was some piece of tat from China when I was drop shipping from AliExpress. Luckily, those days are now over. I got a list of the customers from inside my store, uploaded that to Clavio, and then I've been emailing them and they're making me money. So this is from email. That's the first time they looked at my store. They did not buy on that session, but then they returned another two times. And this is another good thing about when you use UTM, you kind of get a little history of each user that normally you would never be able to see. They've come into the store from an email. They've then returned a couple of times, maybe to look at the item again, or maybe they got out to cart emails or whatever. And then finally, when they did buy and convert, they came in through an ad, all right? So they then saw an ad, which is the same ad as in the other conversion I just showed you. And they've bought this time from this ad. This lookalike is performing really well right now. But again, you can see, right? You can track where they clicked, the campaign, the ad set, and the ad. And that's the plus of using UTM and you can add this to all your ads and then you get much better tracking so you can get a much better handle on your ads. Okay, now onto platform. I could just rip Michael's info off and repackage it myself, but it will be easier if I paste in the bit of the video now where he explains how to do UTM from Shine On. I'll also link his video under mine as well. So if you wanna go and watch the whole thing, you can do that. You don't have to use this same naming convention that I use. The only requirement to get our UTM tracking to work is that your UTM needs to start with SO and then a hyphen. SO and then a hyphen. So you can see I've kind of highlighted that here in this red text, SO hyphen. You can see it's also, I can highlight it right here for you so you can see that SO hyphen. And then up here inside of the UTM section, uh, it's kind of tiny, but you can see that under campaign, this UTM parameter starts with an SO hyphen. SO hyphen is what we listen for in your UTM parameters and know to capture and associate in this section for your data. So that SO hyphen is very, very important. You wanna make sure you put that in all of the UTM parameters that you want to check. Um, let's talk about the naming convention that I have created for my own tracking purposes. But again, you don't have to use this specifically. In Facebook, there is even a, kind of a drag and drop or like a drop down selector kind of thing in the UTM section where you can actually put in your ad IDs and things like that. So if you wanna track it that way, they make it pretty easy for you to do that too. But you've gotta make sure you put that SO hyphen in there. What I recommend doing is after your question mark, you put UTM underscore campaign equals SO hyphen, and then begin your UTM parameters. This is just my recommendation to keep your UTM parameters clean. Let's talk a little bit about the naming convention. Um, it's, it's gonna be a little confusing, so I'd recommend you kind of look at this document. It's confusing because we're trying to keep those naming conventions short. You don't have to, they can be as long as you want them to be, but I just, you know, for ease of use, for my sake, I like to keep them 
kind of short. So here's kind of how this works. And I tried to color code it. So uh, you have campaigns, like that's this top level here. They're in blue. Then you have ad sets. That's, that's the second level down. So they're purple here in this one. And then you have ads. So I've made those orange, right? So in this example, you've got a fishing campaign. You have two fishing ad sets. You have a fishing ad set and then a bass fishing ad set. And then in the fishing ad set, you have fishing images and fishing video ads. And you're, you're testing each of those separately. And then same in the bass fishing, you have bass image and then bass video. And you'll notice that in the naming convention for the campaign, for the ad set, and for the ad, I put numbers on the front end. So you can see my campaign has a number 78078. And then my ad set has 001 for fishing, 002 for bass fishing. And then the ads under the ad sets have the, the numbering starting again. So 001 fishing image, 002 fishing video. You can imagine if I had another ad, it might be 003 fishing whatever. If I had another one, 004 fishing whatever, so on and so forth. Then my UTM parameter for each of the ads, and you'll set the UTM parameters it at the ad layer inside of Facebook. When you're in Facebook, when you're at the ad layer, scroll down to where your link section is, you'll see a whole UTM and tracking section down there where you can write this out and literally copy paste it in. So in that section, it'll say UTM campaign. Uh, I'm sorry, you're gonna wanna paste this uh, or, or put your own naming convention. So UTM underscore campaign equals, and then you're gonna put SO, for shine on hi, so hyphen this is this is the one that that makes our kind of beacon pick it up and then you'll notice I just got the numbers here for this ad so I got 078 that refers to the campaign 001 that refers to the ad set and then 001 again that refers to the ad all right big thanks to Michael there hope that you're all right if you even watch this with me stealing a bit of your video to use in mine Anyone who isn't aware of Michael, he works for Shine On and is an amazing marketer, makes way more money than I do, and uh, is a way better YouTuber than I am as well. He does a lot of webinars and other helpful stuff all aimed around Shine On. So I strongly suggest you head on over to Shine On Prince on Demand YouTube channel, check them out. If you want to watch his full video, if you're on platform and you need to watch the whole thing, I'll link it under this video. And yeah, what he's pretty much iterating is unlike with Shopify where you can just use this one line of sort of universal UTM tracking code in all your campaigns if you're on platform you need these unique UTM parameters and they have to begin with as he said SO that's how their system knows that you're passing UTM codes into it so you might have to get a bit busy with a notepad or a spreadsheet write things down and yeah this will take you a little extra time you know, that's just how the cookie crumbles in this case. You know, and Shine On, they didn't have to do this, right? They've got some poor coder to do a load more work and add this into their back end to make things easier for you guys. So I strongly recommend you use this. In fact, I can't recommend it enough. Whether you're on platform or you have a Shopify store, right now with the iOS 14 updates, if you're not using UTM, you can't accurately track your campaigns. You really can't. It's probably in between 30 and 50% even of purchases right now are inaccurately tracked. They might arrive later after the fact in your ads manager, but as they come in, if they're through iOS, they might well not be registered. And if you haven't got your UTM in place, you won't know which campaigns or ad sets your purchases are coming from. Please use UTM. <laughs> That's the message in this YouTube. And if you want to hate on anyone, hate on Apple. They're the ones that fall here. Okay, that's the end of this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you want me to do YouTubes on anything in particular, drop me a comment or an email. All the details are in the description of this video. I'll see you in the next one.